I'm in the MR Edit app and let's go to the setup. In the connection tab, your mixer model will be right here. You can see it and then you can connect to it. And I like to always have auto connect and auto sync on so that whenever I open the application, if the mixer is in the network, it will connect and sync automatically without my intervention. And this right here, the offline mixer model, you can choose between MR18 and MR12. And it will just basically remove the extra channels on this model model. This is only for the offline use. So if you're editing your scene and you're not connected to the mixer, but if you're connected, it knows what you are connected to. And the sync direction from mixer to PC or from PC to mixer, I always like to have it sync from the mixer. So whatever settings are on the mixer will come to the PC, to this app, not the opposite. Because if I have PC to mixer and I do some changes here that I didn't want to do and then I connect to the mixer they will be applied to my scene and I don't want that so I always keep it on mixer to PC and if you want to initialize everything start from scratch you can click right here initialize and okay it gets rid of everything you're starting a new scene from scratch. The access point. This is the built-in antenna on the mixer. I tried using it for three weeks, I think, when we first got the mixer to our church, and it gave me way too much anxiety. Even to the point where if I'm right next to the mixer, it has trouble connecting. It would take up to several minutes to be able to figure out what's going on and connect. And the building we're in has a lot of networks because it's an apartment building, and so it's very crowded. If you are in a place that doesn't have any networks or even on mobiles nobody has mobiles fine you can use the built-in access point on the mixer but otherwise just get a cheap $20 router and it will do the job you don't have to get anything expensive but if you decide to use that click right here you can leave it open but then anyone can connect to it and it will get worse you can click here and give it a name and give it a password and choose the Wi-Fi channel you're on because some channels may be less crowded than others if you're having trouble with the connection. Then the wireless LAN can have more options for that built-in router in the mixer. I won't go too much into this because I really, really encourage you to get an external router. This is the way to go. Now on the LAN tab, this stands for local area network. Only thing you have to do is click on DHCP, apply. This means that the mixer will automatically search for and find the router and talk to it without your intervention. You don't need to type any IP address or gateway. If you're on static, you have to type these in. The mixer will not search for anything. So just keep it on DHCP, plug in your router, and you'll be good to go. Audio and MIDI settings. Always keep the mixer on 48 kilohertz. There's no reason to go down to 44.1. This is the absolute minimum, the sample rate of the CD back in the old days. So unless you are connected to another digital device that is running at 44.1 and cannot go up to 48, then you may want to run your mixer at that rate because all connected digital devices should be running at the same rate. But in the case of that specific mixer, I don't see why you would run it at that low sample rate. So just keep it at 48 kilohertz. Safe levels. When you turn on the console, if the speakers that are connected to it are already on, you will hear the loud pop and that's bad for the speakers. You can damage your speakers that way. So if you have this on, when you turn on the console, it will mute the outputs. But the inconvenience of this is that they will stay muted until you unmute them again. So if you are sure that things are getting turned on in the proper order, you turn on the mixer first and then you turn on the speakers, you can keep this off so you don't have to every time unmute your main outputs. Link preferences. This right here, you can decide what gets linked when you have two channels that are stereo pair. So if I go to channel one and right here, I link it to channel two, the faders are linked, the solo and mute are linked, the preamps are linked, the gain, everything is linked. The sends, the compression, the EQ, the gate, whatever, everything is linked. But I can turn some of these up. Maybe I don't want the preamp gain to be linked. Maybe I have an already uneven input, so I want to change the preamp gain independently, but I want to keep everything else linked. I can do that. Or maybe I want to have the fader and mute separate, but the EQ and compression and everything else linked, I can also do that. Okay, so right here you decide what will be linked if you do a stereo pair. Just keep everything on unless you have a reason to turn something off. Mute system. Hard mutes implies that the mute 
button of the channel has priority over the mute group. So these channels are assigned to a mute group right here. Click on it, they will be muted. Click off of it, they will be unmuted. So if I check hard mute, then if I use the mute group and I mute this channel manually, it will stay muted. And you can see right here, the channels that are getting muted from the mute group is only turning red at the text. And the channels that are muted from the channel have this square around it with this little triangle. So you know where the mute is coming from. I don't like that. I keep it turned off. DCA group. If this is on and you go to the DCAs and you mute a certain DCA, it's the same idea as a mute group. So if I mute right here, it will also mute the channels themselves. Because by default, when you mute the DCA, it will mute only the signal that is going to the main left right or to any post fader button. Turn off DCA groups. And so right now when I mute this, it does doesn't mute the channel. It just mutes the post fader signal of that channel that is going to the main left right or to post fader buses or to subgroups. Channel on buttons is if you're coming from the Yamaha consoles, instead of mutes, they have on. So if the on button is lit up, it means there is sound coming from the channel. If it's turned off, it means it's muted. So that's just if you're used to the Yamaha consoles, that's a preference. I don't like that, so I'll just keep it off. USB interface, if you choose 2x2, two two, when you open your recording software, it will only show two inputs and two outputs. If you choose 18x18, 18 18, it will show you 18 inputs, 18 outputs. You can record all the channels from the mixer and send 18 channels back to the mixer. MIDI configuration, that's if you have an external MIDI controller that you want to use to control this mixer. Let's jump to the monitor tab. This is what you hear in your headphones, okay? So whatever you plug into the headphones output or if you routed the monitor output to an XLR, then you will hear it from speakers. But this is whatever you hit solo or whatever is on the monitor bus. This is where you decide what you hear from. So by default, it's the left, right. So it's whatever the people are hearing. If you didn't solo anything, and if you did solo something, you will hear that channel only in your headphones. So the monitor source by default is main left, right, AFL, that is after fader listening. So with all the processing and fader position taken into consideration, you can have your headphones output just give you the aux input. You can just listen to the aux if you want. If you're not soloing anything, you can select a USB return, you can select a certain bus to listen to. Okay, that's up to you. And when you hit solo on a channel, you can decide if that is gonna be after fader, so with the fader position or pre-fader listening. So without the fader position. And if you decide to do that, you may want to turn on PFL dim because it's probably gonna be a lot louder than with the fader. Just so you don't damage your ears, you can apply a certain dim. And when you solo a channel and the setting is to pre-fader listening, that dim will be applied. Okay, it will be quieter in volume. Same thing if you're soloing a bus, you can do pre-fader or post-fader. I like to keep it at AFL if I'm using the headphones, which on this mixer I'm not. And you can also change the monitor level from here. So that's like the fader of the monitor bus if you will. You can mute it and you can make it mono if you want to check things in mono. Let's go to the GUI preferences. This is only for the edit app. This is not the settings in the mixer itself. This is just for the app. This sends tab apply changes to all channels. When you go to the sends page is this global icon. It's by default turned on. So if you change the tap point right here for a certain bus, it will change that for all channels. And if you have this turned off, it will only change it for the selected channel. See? So you you can see if I turn it on or off, this is the global icon that is turning on or off. Auto select, if you have something soloed, it will select that channel immediately. Channel fader move, if you move a fader, it will select that channel. I don't like the mixer to auto select things. I like to manually select the channel that I want to work on because otherwise things get messed up. I don't like that. I'll just keep these turned off. Solo mode, exclusive solo means that you can only have one channel soloed at a time. You cannot solo multiple things together. I'll just keep it turned off. Find faders, if this is turned off, the faders will be super fast and not precise at all. If you have this turned on, then the faders will be much slower and much more precise. Deactivate mouse wheel, if this is off and I hover over the fader and I turn the wheel, it will raise and lower the faders. You can turn it on to prevent you accidentally changing the levels. Update rate, this is how fast the meters and the RTA, the real-time analyzer, how fast they react. You can slow that down, you can update it 
at half speed. Restore a window at startup. This is when you open the app again. Do you want to have everything that you had open or do you want it to open as if you're open it for the first time? I'll keep that on. Bus buttons, if I turn that off, it will only show me bus one, two, three, four in the numbers. If I show the names, then it will show me the names of the buses. Confirm pop-ups. I like to have everything on. So whenever I want to do something, change something in the settings, it will ask me, do you really want to do that? And I will hit yes or okay. I don't want to accidentally do something that I didn't want to do. And this always on top, you can do it from each window. If I have the buses window and buses is this little pin right here. So if this is not pinned and I click on something else, it will go behind the screen. If this is pinned, however, even if I click somewhere else, it will stay on top always. You don't need to do that from the setup page. You can do it on each of the windows like this that you want to stay on top.